welcome to the second part of the series where we talk about the right coronary artery. So if you didn't see part one about the left coronary artery anatomy, go ahead and go back and start with that first video. But if you've watched it, great. Let's move on to the other main vessel that we have that is the right coronary artery. So before we talked about the cusps, right? The left cusp, that's where your LCA came off of and then the right coronary cusp that we haven't talked about yet. So that's where the RCA comes off of. So this whole thing is considered the right coronary artery and then it has smaller branches coming off of it. So again, we can segment the right coronary artery because this is very long, right? And like we said before, if we read in the report that there's a stent somewhere, I wanna know is it proximal, mid, distal? So I kinda know what I'm looking at when you look in the angiograms. So the proximal RCA, the middle RCA, which will have the RV branch that we'll talk about, and then the distal RCA sometimes is there, sometimes isn't. So the one you're looking at right now is what we call a dominant right coronary artery. And what that means is it has both the PL, the posterior lateral, and the PDA coming off of the RCA. So it covers a lot of territory and it's a very important vessel. Now, when you have those components, you might call this whole segment here with both the PL and the PDA, the distal RCA, and that's okay. But some people, their RCA will end right here or sometimes even up here if they have no acute marginals. So then you just have this tiny, tiny little RCA. So you might not segment it beyond proximal and the distal segment. There might not be a middle because it might not be long enough. And this is really where you'll see the most variation in people's anatomy. Some are left dominant, some are right dominant, some are co-dominant. So there's very different sizing and no one size fits all, right? So now let's talk about the smaller branches that kind of come off of it. Now, the first two are probably where you'll hear the most variation depending on what you're reading, depending who you're working with. So I'll kind of give you both um, reasonings here and neither are really wrong. So some will say, well, the first branch that comes off the RCA is the conus, right? Which I have labeled right here, which actually is the second branch in my image. Does it really make a huge deal? No, what you're mostly looking at is directionality. So the conus feeds the right ventricular outflow tract. So I know it's kind of hard to imagine a heart here, but let's say this was the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle, and this is the atrium. So if the conus feeds the right ventricular outflow tract, then it needs to go this way. And then the SA nodal branch feeds what it says, right? The SA node that is in the right atrium. So it has to go the opposite way. So instead of labeling based on what branches off first, go ahead and label based off directionality because you'll have some people who have a conus with a separate ostium, meaning it doesn't come off of the RCA at all. You would have the RCA come off here and then the conus might have its own ostium off of the aortic root, okay, or off of the right cusp. Then that kind of negates the whole principle, right, that the conus would come off first. So really you're just looking at where is it going, right? If it's going down towards the right ventricular outflow tract with the rest of the branches, then it's the conus. If it's going away, the opposite direction of where everything else in the RCA is going, then it's the SA nodal branch. I hope that helps. And both of those, if they come off RCA, will be kind of in that proximal segment because what comes off next in this middle segment is the RV branch, the right ventricular branch. And again, you'll see it does, it branches off and it goes towards the right ventricle. It kind of goes towards the same area as the conus, but it's in the mid, seg mid segment instead of the proximal segment. That's how you can tell conus from RV branch. So in order, yes, the conus will usually be in that proximal area, the RV branch will be in the middle area, and then you'll have another branch down here more in the distal segment, and that is, or are, because you can have more than one, the acute marginals, or AMs, as you'll see them um, abbreviated, AM1, AM2, AM3. And the same idea with this as the diagonals for the LAD, you number based off what came off first. So the first branch would be acute marginal one, the second one would be acute marginal two, and again, really the difference is, is the acute marginals will be after the RV branch. And you will see the, the RV branch does take kind of like this extra tortuous turn, whereas the acute marginals really kind of round out at the bottom of the RCA. Then you have the distal segment. And remember, not everybody has this coming off the RCA. 
and then you'll segment that into the posterior lateral and the PDA, posterior descending artery. So how can you tell the difference between those? Well, if you notice, the PDA has something special, these little branches, which are called septal perforators. And if you remember, we saw that on the LAD, right, in the left coronary artery. Or some people have this branch coming off of the CERC, right? That was in our LCA video as well. So it can come off the RCA and that would be the PDA, it would be in the distal segment of the RCA. And the other one is the posterior lateral. Now sometimes the posterior lateral can have a lot of branching that almost looks like septals, but the really key part here in the PL is it has this acute bend. So it kind of comes up and out and has this little bend at the top. And you'll see that on some of the angiograms we'll look at um, in future videos. So the PL, is has this kind of acute bend and goes out laterally right posterior lateral and then the pda is kind of longer and straighter and has the septals coming off of it so i think that's a good start on the basics of the right coronary artery anatomy you know this one can be a little more complicated because you don't have like the two big branches like the led and the circ you really do have to know all of these little components because the rca itself is really one main branch right that has a bunch of little ones coming off of it and that's the end of this second video for the coronary anatomy and angiogram series Next, we'll be moving on to what these look like in different views.